James Daniels told uh, Mark Caboli of the Athletic the other day that he is not getting a contract extension with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We've already gone through that, but it seems to be as if the Steelers might be moving on from this guy, ready to move on from this guy after this season, which is nuts, in my opinion. You don't move on from arguably your best offensive lineman at 26 years old. Makes absolutely zero sense. This guy is a starter in the NFL. He's been a starter in the NFL. He's young and a veteran, which is everything you could ask for. And he's meshed with this offensive line. But it clearly indicates something. And while everybody wants to talk about Mason McCormick maybe being that guy, and Omar Khan did bring up Mason McCormick, or did bring up James Daniels' contract when they drafted Mason McCormick. I remember sitting right there. Spencer Anderson might be my pick as the guy that they think could become that next long-term starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A seventh-round pick. By the time he starts, he's got one year left on his deal, which means he's going to sign a very low-end contract on his next contract. It's going to be very, very minimal, which is a very positive move financially for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think he's got a ton of potential, and I've heard some rumbles. Some people say, like, hey, dude, this guy could have, like, a Matt Filer path to being a long-term starter in the NFL, which is not a bad move for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Spencer Anderson has looked impressive at times. He looked impressive last season. There was no question he was going to make the 53-man roster, which is very good for a seventh-round pick. I'm a big Spencer Anderson guy. I think he's got a better shot than Mason McCormick. I still think you're nuts to get rid of James Daniels. Um, but do you think that a seventh-round pick, a guy I know you haven't gotten to watch, you think he's got a shot at, at doing this? And, and would you pick him over a fourth-round rookie uh, next year when the Steelers do move on from James Daniels, if that's the case? See, the thing is, when you talk about that, and you talked about it in training camp, you were like, man, they really like Spencer Anderson. And I was like, yeah, okay, seventh mm -hmm. round pick. That They like him. That's great. They, yeah. like, they like a project. Well, by year three, you have a chance to see if that project's working out. And they liked him in year one. They're liking him in year two. He might not be ready now, but maybe that's exactly what they're hoping for. They're hoping that he learns behind a guy in James Daniels who's been very consistent for the Steelers the last couple of seasons. Now, again, I agree with you. I don't think they should be moving on from James Daniels, especially when you don't have to pay much of your offensive line, if at all, going forward with three guys on rookie contracts. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't know much about Spencer Anderson, but if the Steelers are in a point where they've liked him last year, they liked him this year, and he's continuing to grow, sometimes you just got to trust what they're able to do. Like I said, I'd keep Daniels, but man, they're continuing to push Anderson. And eventually, if there's that much smoke, there has to be fire behind what this kid can do. That's what I'm saying. At some point, it just becomes real. And I think it's I think it's there. I think the tangible part of this is real. Like Spencer Anderson was the dude who came out of Maryland. So you're not going to get a bunch of of recognition coming into the NFL draft. But he was a guy who played all positions, who started a ton of football before he ended up in the NFL, who has great versatility, who's a massive human being and at the same time gets to develop from guys that are pretty impressive in James Daniels and Isaac Siamalu with Pat Meyer being their offensive line coach. I think that helps tremendously. I look at Spencer Anderson as a guy that, just like you said, in three years, you're less of a project. You might not even be a project anymore. And Mason McCormick is still a project in the making. And maybe Mason McCormick is the guy after Spencer Anderson. Maybe they like that, but I got more of a sense that Spencer Anderson is where they see the future of right guard than Mason McCormick right now. I'm not saying long-term. I'm just saying right now how they see that. I still think it's nuts that you're getting rid of James Daniels or having the thoughts of getting rid of James Daniels. He's 26 years old, and yeah, you're going to have to pay him a boatload of money, but if he's good, man, if you don't have a sure thing behind him, it doesn't make much sense if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers because you just got through the our offensive line is garbage and it's holding this team back. Why are you trying to do it again? Why are you trying to go back to where you were? That's a that's a shocker for me. And at the same time, if Nate Herbig's gone next year, you're going to have to draft somebody else that could hopefully be a swing guard and a center because McCormick is good, but you need two of them, obviously. I don't know. I got a, I got a hard time believing that this makes much sense, but it seems to be in the Pittsburgh Steelers' plan. And sometimes these plans work out. Spencer Anderson's a dude that I think will surprise a lot of people at training camp and get a lot of reps because he's just young and that's where he goes. And at the same time, if we're going to be honest, Nate Herbig is also going to be very affordable next offseason. And I don't see him as part of the plan, but he's also 25 years old. And if they believe he could be a starter, why not resign him to a two-year deal 
and put him in the competition as well, because that makes more sense if you're looking for options and you don't want to pay somebody a lot of money. I mean, you're going to resign Nate Herbig for $2 million a season, maybe max. And that's not a lot of money. I think that they'll be all right. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm stunned by the situation. I think Spencer Anderson's my guy as a pick to replace James Daniels long term. Um, and from there, you'll kind of see. But I like Spencer Anderson. I think that's a name people got to start uh, paying attention to. When we get to training camp, you'll see more of them. There's not much you could say. Like It's tough when you sit here and talk about an offensive lineman and, and try to detail how good they are without just saying he's good. You know, he's okay. very athletic, for, especially for his size, and he's very good. Uh, he's like three times the size of Russell Wilson, which might be an issue. <laughs> but besides that, I think he's uh, I think he's got everything, uh, everything you're looking for when you're looking for an offensive lineman. Yeah. And the other, you know, impact of this is what happens this season, right? Does Spencer Anderson get some play? Yeah. How does he look? How does he progress throughout the season? Because all this is doing as of right now is saying, all right, we're going to make a decision on James Daniels after the season, after we see. Yep. How does Nate Herbig do in the opportunities he's given? How does Spencer Anderson do in the opportunities that he's given? So as of right now, all this tells me is that they're not sold on making James Daniels the guy. They want to see how this year plays out before making that statement and handing out that money. Yes, yes, I uh, I agree. I agree. I, I think it's a, a wait and see thing. If James Daniels honestly is sitting around thinking, hey, I'll take a cheap deal, I think it just works out way too well, but... If again, if I'm James Daniels, go get that money, boy. You're 26 years old. You're a proven starter in this NFL. Go get the money. Don't don't be sitting here looking for a hometown discount. That uh that never works ever.